Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. In this season, inshallah, we'll be discussing different types of maraja and their opinions also in, uh, in regards to Islamic duties. Joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Nice to have you again on the, on the new set, mashallah. Yeah, thank you. Sheikh, my first question is. In regards to uh, the, the youth, what is the opinion of the scholars and the maraja about the youth and, and, and uh, you know, how they should be uh, behaving and the attitude towards fiqh? Inshallah. A'udhu billah. As-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma sallallahu ala muhammadin. Initially, when we look at the Holy Qur'an, and the holy traditions and narrations, we find that there are emphasis on the um, role of the youth in the society and the role of the youth in propagating and spreading the um, message of Allah SWT and uh, the message in which was delivered by prophets and many of them if not the majority or all of them, were, began their journey in the very early ages of their youth. We come, for example, to Yusuf salam, When he was taken to Egypt and was sold as a slave, he was in his youth, youth um, a very young age, um, and sent to Egypt. And eventually he began his message towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guiding people and taking them out from the shirk to the belief in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, in the Holy Quran, um, the word youth or the youths are m is mentioned in uh, one or two verses in the Holy Quran that I found. The first verse with regard to Ashab al-Kahf the people of, Kaf, of the cave um, in which they were also youth who went uh, to the cave to uh, worship Allah SWT and to stay away from that uh, pagan society that uh, the society in which worshipped other objects in other words the Quran says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim innahum فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدًا They were um, a group of youths in which they believed in their Lord and we added to them more guidance. We guided them more and more. So they were youth, fitya. Youths in which they carried the message of Allah SWT to the humanity. Also, we have Ibrahim alayhi salam in other verse in which states That we've heard that a youth, a young man with the name of Ibrahim with regard to the, um, the statues in which Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, he uh, destroyed them. So the holy verse mentions Fatan youth. So the journey of the prophets and the guiders began in their early uh, youth age in which in this age the one is able to move, is able to provide uh, guidance, provide services to the humanity in overall because after that age or even before that age in childhood you can't do anything because you're a child and also if you're in your elderly age, you're 70, 80, it's difficult for you to uh, be proactive and enjoy that strength and power in order to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, when we come and we see the ulama, for example, uh, the great reformers, the great uh, even scientists, for example, they began in their early ages of youth. They didn't start in their 70s or 60s. So 
that's why we see the success comes initially, or one of the parts of the success comes from uh, the one who starts education, starts reading, writing, seeking knowledge in such early age. So by the 40s and 50s, he has reached a level of knowledge in which he can nurture students and teach others and guide others. With regard to the question about the opinion of ulama and scholars with youth affairs, so let me begin with one of the ulama, his eminence Ayatollah Sistani, where he advises the academics, uh, those youths who are studying in the colleges and universities, advising them uh, with um, a few of these uh, important uh, facts in which the one should take into consideration. He says, for example, it is an obligation that the one should truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to believe in the hereafter. So the first thing for this youth, he must establish a, 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 a profound belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the hereafter. Because without this belief, the one can go to any direction and deviate from the right path and m might end up with giving the services to the wrong sides, to, to, the, to the sides of the enemies, for example. And he also gives the advice to possess akhlaq, to possess good morals, again. So after the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have this akhlaq, great akhlaq. Uh, the morals in which the one should possess them at all levels and all the time. And also he encourages for the youth to, um, to learn a new profession or skills, to have a career for the future in order for them so they won't waste their time. They reach the age of 25, for example. They must have a profession. They must have a, some kind of uh, ability to uh, provide a service to the society. They have a skill, so they would get a job, because otherwise they'd be un unemployed. And also, he also encourages the youth, again, to have early family formation, to get married as early as possible, and also have children. So important advice by the Sayyid, uh, that the one should um, f uh, look forward to get married as soon as possible. Um, the second marja, which mentions also some advices to the youth, is Ayatollah Sayyid al-Hakim. He says as well to pay close attention to the original religious and social culture. In other words, we go back to our original belief and aqidah and culture so the one can immune himself from other cultures and beliefs and creeds in which might deviate and corrupt uh, our youth. Of course, that would benefit themselves, their society, their country. That's the result of the one who sticks with his own beliefs and culture and doesn't import cultures from other sides. Um, the other marja is Ayatollah, the late uh, Muhammad Ashirazi, who also mentions this fact, which is similar to other marja, that one of the most important matter um, for the youth is the belief again, aqidah. And um, because that protects the individual in all aspects of economics, politics, religious, business, social, and so forth. So the true aqidah, the correct aqidah and belief would protect the one from all deviations. In any field you enter, you want to work uh, in, in, in politics, in economics, in trade, um, in social services. If you have good aqidah and profound aqidah, you won't uh, do wrong things and uh, wrongdoings, basically. You would provide the service that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your imam, alayhi salam. The next marja, Ayatollah uh, Sheikh Wahid al Khurasani, he calls to revive the realities of the Shia Islam, those profound realities in, in this great uh, religion, mm -hmm. in the minds and the hearts of the youths. So important. Because now many of the youths, sadly, 
some of them, um, they have lost these realities. They have lost this uh, understanding the true meanings of being a Muslim and being a believer in Ahl al-Bayt They try to, some of them try to find from, you know, to look for celebrities, for example, okay. other personalities. So, no, we have to go back to our realities and our own beliefs and try to have the true role models who are Muhammad and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Ahsan Sheikhna. Sheikhna, what about the opinion of uh, Samahat al Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, Allah? What does he have to say in regards to the obligations of the youth towards Islam and Islamic fiqh? Samahat al Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, Allah, he would mention that before we actually establish, let's say, an Islamic government or Islamic movement or organization or anything else, the first thing we have to think about are the youths. In other words, before I establish an Islamic um, center or mosque or I have to think where do I uh, accommodate the youth in this organization. So important. Because um, um, as the Sayyid says that they have, in this age of youth, they have the stamina, they have the power, they have the strength, um, they have the eagerness to, to serve their religion and community. So we should take care of their, um, um, their needs in, in the society, in the community, and try to offer the best for them and employ them in these uh, places and roles so they can uh, provide the best for the community. Because at the end of the day, um, those who are elderly, they can't do whatever um, they, they, they did in the past when they were young and youth. So now it's the role of the young gener generation to take over and help the elderly as well in running uh, these centers and these movements and, and so forth. Ahsan. It's nice how you know, all the maraja you know, give time and dedication and recognize the importance of the youth and their involvement in Islam. And also how you know, at that tender age, you know, there's so many questions, there's so many issues and that to make sure that they can stay within the bounds and foes of Islam and to focus on you know aqaid and also fiqh and then later on inshallah to develop themselves into good Muslim beings. Shaykh my next question is in regards to um, the youth and their issues. How can we address the issues of the youth? Well to address the issues of the youth is not just a theoretical or just a verbal uh, means of trying to deliver something to them or to their parents or to those who are related. Yes, you can give advice, you can talk, which is great, but we need more uh, pragmatic steps, more practical elements in, in this field. So, for example, to get them uh, involved, for example, to educate them, for example, we need, let's say, provide them with libraries, specific libraries for the youths and in their language, if they are living in the West, for example, whatever mm -hmm. uh, place they live, they have to have their own books and at all levels in terms of the age levels. Okay. And that's important. Otherwise, how could you deliver the message of Islam to the youths if they can't um, read the father's yeah. language, for example? Yeah. They can't read their parents' language. And s well, they can speak it roughly, yeah. But they can't really write and read the, mm -hmm. la the original language. I think there's a big issue in our community where we learn how to conversate in our mother tongue, but we don't know how to academically use the language. Exactly, exactly. So that's one of it, is to basically provide for them... So reading material the, the, reading and make sure that information and knowledge exactly. is available in a language that they can because, understand. Because um, the original language for the Islam is Arabic. Yes. And the main and the most um, sources are in Arabic. So in order to deliver the message of Islam to this generation who now they live in the West, they have to be educated according to the Islamic uh, teachings and education. So they need to have access to these sources in their own language and understanding. With regard to other uh, facts in which uh, Samad Said mentions uh, to the youth that um, Sometimes the youth are in need of uh, financial help so they can build their, their life. So if they want to set up a business, for example, a project, 
So we try to help them if we have the, um, the ability to uh, take out loan, or for example, if somebody who is a merchant or a trademan who can help them, support them. Um, so you're actually offering also financial support. You're offering not only just, um, uh, um, how can I say, uh, religious support, also material support. So Madi and Ma'na, we both mm -hmm. support for the youth, so they won't run away from you. That you only provide us with religious facts, that's it. No, we try also help the others. As the Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt they helped people, not only by guiding them, telling, telling them to come and pray and fast and go to Hajj, but also they supported financially. He gave that amount of money and wealth to certain people who were in need. Ahlul Bayt also used to support the poor, for example. Yeah. Support those who wanted to, for, for example, um, establish a, a trade or business. The Imam would support them. So we have to also support the youth in this uh, field as well. So religious and also financial aspect. Also, Sayyid mentions um, that we have to set up organizations and associations in which um, provides for those who are still in education support. So if they need the support as students, we can support them. Also, he mentions that uh, we provide uh, places of worship for them as well, because the youth um, are more likely to have their own community as well. So the kids have their own community, their own gatherings. And also the youth, would, they would like to have their own gatherings and majlis, especially if it's in different language as we have now in English, for example. So we have to open um, um, specific locations or, or space in the centers or Husseini or mosques in order for them so they can have own activities and they can pro provide um, the programs in their own uh, notions and uh, in which are in line with the Islamic teachings. So we need to facilitate and accommodate for the youth uh, these aspects. And he also mentions that to set up also some bodies in which they can help in solving the problems within the society, within the youth, for example, in all aspects as well. I think in today's day and age, a lot of the youth, they have issues with, you know, um, where to study, what to study, should I go to university or not, um, where to take my career path. Also, there's also challenges in being a Muslim, free mixing, um, you know, sometimes there's issues with, um, you know, drugs and alcohol. So I guess it's very, very important that each centre establishes some form of relationship as well as some sort of aid to help the youth. Exactly. Now we have uh, thousands of organizations in the West in which they support the youth. There are youth forums, youth, youth something, you know, support. Uh, they are set up all charitable organizations to support mm. and help those youth who are abandoned or isolated from the society or those who are, uh, they fall into committing crimes and so yes. forth. So we have already these things in, in the West, but Islamically or religiously, we need to also have this as well. Mm -hmm. to give them not only the, the financial support or uh, other means of support, but also to guide them. You know, they might need more support in terms of uh, religiosity, for example. So we try to support them, and also financially as well, and all other aspects. Ahsan, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sheikhna. Sheikhna, what about you know, spreading awareness and, and to promote certain topics with the youth? I mean, how, how do we go about that? How do we promote and spread awareness amongst the youth? As I've just mentioned a few minutes ago that um, the youth need advice and admonishment in all stages and levels, um, especially when they reach that age of the teens and the age of after the puberty and the age of bulugh which is very sensitive and crucial. So they need support, they need to be uh, given advice by the elderly, by the professionals, if somebody's academic, who can advise them which route to take, for example. Some of them, uh, let's say, are not interested in studying. They just mm -hmm. want to stop studying, they want to work. 
so you can guide them and tell them what are the best options. So you, you bring somebody from the market, for example, yeah. a merchant, a tradesman, for example. If somebody wants to continue studying, then you bring somebody from, from the university mm -hmm. um, advice center, for example, or, or for, for example, somebody who wants to um, basically gain skills in specific fields, then yeah. also you bring a career advisor. But also that could be done within the community, the, the religious community, for example, the Muslim community. We have all these advisors in all aspects and levels, alhamdulillah. So they have to be, uh, I think they have to have a mentor, somebody who can overlook their activities so we, we shouldn't leave them to make their own decisions because they might end up, na'udhu billah, and God forbid, uh, as a result uh, you know, of bad friends, the bad society, ending up in drugs and so forth, and crimes and so forth. Thank you very much, Sheikh Rahman. Thank you to all our viewers for joining us. Inshallah, join us on another episode of Akam SOS, where we'll be discussing duties and practices for Muslims by Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi and also by other Maraja as well. See you next time. Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh.